right. Now, the next story I'm going to hear about has had a bit of coverage in media in Auckland. And it seems to me a rather curious tale, but one that, particularly in the current context, um, is really worthy of, of I think, uh, nationwide or, or, or greater coverage. The Auckland uh, Rescue Helicopter Trust, and we're going to find out from our next guest, has been operating for a while, and it rescues people, literally. It's a charitable trust and fund that runs um, uh, helicopter rescue recovery operations, and, and they're iconic, the Westpac, the red and yellow uh, helicopters, right? And they've saved a heck of a lot of people. They work at cur currently in conjunction with another trust, the Northland, I think it is, Rescue Helicopter Trust, and uh, Auckland Northwoods, um, they provide life-saving, literally life-saving services. They are trusts, charitable trusts, set up with a specific public good in mind. But reports have emerged that the Auckland Rescue Helicopter Trust has a plan to sell its $38 million worth of assets and essentially its fundraising and charitable fundraising works to a private company. And that there is a schism or a split between the five members or the five trustees of the Auckland Rescue Helicopter Trust, two of whom have taken action to prevent the sell-off, saying it is in breach of the Trust's purpose and direction and no um, rationale has been put forward to it. One of the trustees who wants to do this split and make the sell-off is a guy called John Duncan, who interestingly has been involved in similar controversies around the Auckland showgrounds. Remember they were being sold to some movie production company and a court put the kibosh on that. Uh, and also the Speedway and Cornwall Park Trust, John Duncan's been involved in that as a trustee and all those things have had issues. So what's going on here and what is at stake? Well, to find out, I thought I'd, we'd get in contact with one of the uh, founders, really, of the Trust, um, Murray Bolton, who joins us on the phone from Australia now, I think. Murray, how... Uh, Mexico, sorry. Mexico, good Lord. Uh, Murray, uh, welcome to the platform. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. We got yep. you there, Murray? Well, glad to be there. All right, Murray. Yeah, you do. Yep, hopes. Okay. If you could give us some background, when was the Trust set up? The, the Rescue Helicopter Trust in Auckland, and why? We well, set up in 1990. It, was, it actually came out of uh, Auckland's uh, life-saving. They started the thing back in the late 80s or mid-80s, and it came to the point where they couldn't sustain it on their own because they were trying to raise funds for their surf life-saving activities as well as their helicopter activities. So they put it into a separate trust, and the trust was settled in, I think this uh, early 1990, and I guess I was the only still around. Well, I, I resigned a couple of years ago, but I was a founding trustee for 30 plus years. And Murray, and, 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 yeah. And Murray, I know you've got corporates like Westpac on board who support you. You get a government contract for, for the services you provide. On average, how many people would you know, trust helicopters have saved, how many lives would you save on average a year, do you reckon? Well, it'd certainly be well into double digits. I don't know. We, we, don't, we deliberately don't keep that sort of statistic. But it's, I mean, it's, it's questionable when, when you save a life. I mean, the reality is that any, anybody will tell you in the first 30 minutes to an hour is, is the time that you can save the lives of people most, most commonly. And... Uh, if you get out there in the first 30 minutes by helicopter rather than by road ambulance or anything else, you've got a much better chance of saving people. So the, those statistics are pretty hard to measure, really. Yeah. Uh, and, and look, I think personally think it's a great shame we do not have a national system or network of this um, and that it is left to trusts and to communities to get together and make these services work for them and, ma and make them available. Murray, a fair amount of the trust income also comes from government contracts, the government contracting to the trust for services? Yeah, look, originally, um, you know, we, there was no support from the government. It was, all, um, it was all funded by charity. And then when ACC came along, then there was, there was um, obviously agreements where we would get involved in road accidents and get there quickly and 
So ACC pay had a had a contracted amount, but it's never covered the total cost of putting on the service. And then more recently, we've been doing inter, inter hospital transfers for the Ministry of Health again at a at a price, at least when I was there, that never covered the cost. So it's subsidised by p- providing certain services, but it, still a lot of things we do we don't get paid for. And if we go out to a road accident, for example, and there's no need for us. Uh, then we don't get any pay. We don't get any pay for that. But we'd rather be there in case we need yeah. it than find out later. And Murray, the there. trust, so, I mean, the the deed of the trust, is that it's there for the public good, right? To service the public. It's not a commercial yeah. business. It's a public good trust. And absolutely not. Absolutely not. And uh, you know, the, the the Ministry of Health kind of pushed us into joint venturing with Northern to provide a Northern service. Open North, and uh, so there was a, there was a structure set up before I left where there was an operating entity that that provided the service with the with the equipment provided by the trust. So the trust continued to own their helicopters, and they just um, leased them to to an operating entity. And it seems to me what's happening, and I'm not involved. I've just been asked by a couple of these trustees to give us some advice. But from what I can gather, what's trying to be done is to move those assets into this entity uh, and basically uh, and not have adequate representation from the shareholders, being the ARHT. So uh, it, it looks so about it a So it would become, and I understand the there's, a, yeah, there's about $38 million worth of assets involved. They'd go to uh, a company that currently provides operational and maintenance services. But well, with no... I with no so, but it was... A, it was yeah. Yeah, it was it was a shell. It was a, it was basically a shell company set up just to manage the the contract with with the Ministry of Health. Nothing other than that, and then it was provided. And the who owns that shell company, the, Murray? Who owns that shell well, company? Well, it, it, as far as I know, it's still owned by the two trusts, being in Nest, which is the North Auckland Trust, Northland Trust, and Auckland. But I'm not. I'm not close enough to be able okay. to answer that. Question. Can you see any rationale, any financial or operational rationale for taking all the assets? No, I can't. The... I, I, yeah. I, I, think, I think the people that try to make this happen will have that it's for the benefit of the uh, making the operation more smooth. That's a load of rubbish. Um, it, 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 is, it is some way getting control of the ARH and, and its entire operation. I mean, it's one of the most successful fundraisers in the country, uh, ARHT, uh, against any of the major charities. So, look, I I mean, to me, I was approached by the two trustees who I hadn't even met, so they they became trustees after I left. From what what they've told me, I think their questions are absolutely reasonable. I don't understand why they can't be answered. I know that lawyers asking for answers and these guys just refuse to respond. Well, I don't that, that I smell a rat when I have that, but I, I don't know enough to be able to say what's going on other than their questions are reasonable and there's no reason why they can't be addressed. And if they have to go to get caught to get answers to what are reasonable questions, that seems pretty suspicious to me. And I've read a little bit what's happened in, in the showgrounds. There's a bit of a common denominator here. Well, that's this guy, John Duncan, who's one of the trustees that wants yeah, to I do... Yeah, I never met him. Wouldn't enough. Yeah, I wouldn't have done. I fell over it, but uh, it sounds to me he's associated with some of these, uh, what I would call a little bit sus- uh, suspect operations involving charitable trusts. And uh, I think we've all had stories about bowling clubs and those sorts of things where they've got these uh, and hidden assets and like, nobody left to manage them. So a few members try and uh, wrestle that. I'm not saying that's what's happening here, but this this present in these sorts of things. I, I really, I'm really grateful for somebody who's a founding trustee for 30 years of my life, and there's two trustees standing up and being counted. We're going to do everything we can to not let this happen. So that's why I'm supporting them. Yeah. And all Mar- the Murray, aren't. for the people, what would you say to the people of Auckland who the trust was set up to service and help? Because it's, and I'll be honest, stand, as stand a story, as a yeah. story going on because it's a story that many people would overlook their eyes would glaze over it involves financial transactions and companies and oh too hard yeah but i mean this this these assets have been created from from the from aucklanders and and people from coromandel as well because we service coromandel but yeah the and and businesses who have donated significant amounts of money over the years so this 
uh, you know, Auckland has really invested in this thing, and um, to, to argue that the assets need to be moved out of Auckland is, I mean, not physically, but legally, makes no sense at all. The thing can operate absolutely perfectly and let let uh, Auckland continue to to provide its own mm-hmm. run and do its own mm-hmm. fundraising yeah. and provide support. Because as a trustee, uh, as a trustee, getting rid of all your assets gets rid of your very reason for existing. It's like you asset strip your own organisation. Yeah, there, what it's what correct. does it do? What's its purpose? Well, well even, even, even if ARHT is as a shareholder in the new entity, they should have a shareholder commensurate with their with their contribution. Now, if they're putting thirty eight million of that. I don't know enough about Nest to know, but I know their assets come nothing like that. Let's say it's ten million. Then the thing, sh- the thing should be owned eighty percent by by uh, ARHT and twenty percent by Nest, and then the representation around the board should be should be according. But this is not my understanding of the structure of this new entity. It's fifty fifty with all independent directors and well, none of the existing trustees other than those that are leading this charge are on the new on the new entity. Uh, as a director. Well, I- yeah, yeah look, I, well. I'm sorry. I, I think it's a legitimate thing to ask questions about. It's public money. It's a public organisation. Murray, I've got to say, having yeah. talked to you today, I'm more concerned about this story than I was at the beginning of it. I, 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 I saw some coverage of it and I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, but I think this needs well, uh, I mean, I uh, think some sunlight. There, there, there is, there's, re- there's, there's reasonable questions here that can be answered. You know, there's there's um, there's all sorts of issues that they've got, like taking money out of Auckland and giving it to Northland when, when it's been. I mean, there's all sorts of issues that I feel that they these trustees are asking the questions and they're just being blank. Yeah. Well, that's not right. That's yeah. mine. And Mark, how you could, how yeah. how somebody could be a chairman of an organisation like this and allow this to happen is beyond me. And that guy's name's Simon Tompkins, isn't it? He's the chair. Yeah, correct. And yeah. this guy, yeah, John Duncan, it. who's been involved in other trusts that have yeah. had issues with asset sales and stuff, he's involved. Uh, I, yeah. I know, actually, and I note from the coverage that um, uh, someone who appears on the platform, Nuanthi Samara Cohn, she is one of the trustees who's raising questions and, and asking questions about this, yeah. isn't she? Yeah, yeah. two of them. Yeah. There's only five on there. So it's a, it's a, it, there's five okay. people on the trust, just... three of them want to asset strip, two of them don't. Um, yeah. yeah, and I don't understand like an it's kind of but yeah. this this smells. To sorry, me. sorry, you just, yeah. You say this is a smelly. Like beer. this smells. It yeah. smells to me. Yeah, I don't know what of, but doesn't doesn't seem right. Oh, uh, little. Well, it's a public organisation. Perhaps we need some sunlight uh, to explain all. Murray, I yeah, thank correct. you very much indeed for joining us uh, this morning. You have piqued my no interest problem. in this story very much indeed. But, thank well, you. I've, I've, Um, That's Murray uh, Bolton. He's one of the founding trustees of the Auckland Rescue Helicopter Trust back in uh, 1990. And I know it sounds an obscure story, but particularly in the context right now where rescue helicopters and those sort of organisations are really doing their bit for the community, why would a trust sell all its assets to a private company? And how come the the chair of the trustees and the two other trustees, including this guy John Duncan, who want to do this, why can't they explain to the public, for whom obviously they work, why have they done this in a way that two of the trustees have gone to lawyers, and I don't know if this I think they're seeking some sort of injunction, and they're saying that this sale must not be allowed to go ahead until the rationale and the reasoning is clear. I think this is an interesting story, and I think it might well develop.